Okay. I would like you to uh, take the next half hour and uh, pretend that you're not programmers for a little bit. Get out of that programming mindset and um, try to enter the mindset of a surfer. So please just stand up, like five minutes. Um, we're going to pretend oh my goodness, that we're going surfing. So it's, it's very important to stretch where you surf. It really uses a lot of, of your upper back muscles and stuff and your whole body. So I'm going to... I want you to uh, close your eyes. If you can, is that, oh man, I need caffeine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> close your eyes, but don't go to sleep. Uh, follow along. So you imagine you're on this beach. I want you to visualize the, the feeling of the sand underneath your toes, uh, the sound of the waves, the sound of the ocean in front of you. There's some like loud, low sounds of the waves crashing in the distance, and there's some higher pitched sounds of the waves crashing closer to shore, and there's this general sort of like fuzz of the, the water moving. Uh, imagine that you, you relax, a little nervous about a talk, and you're getting ready to go surfing. You take some deep breaths, and you, you feel the constriction of a tight wetsuit around your chest. Uh, you look down at your surfboard in the sand. You bend over, pick it up, feel its, its weight in your hands. You feel that the texture of the wax, it's like sticky but hard, and there's some sand stuck to it, and you awkwardly stick it under your, your arm, and you start walking into the water purposefully, intentionally. You notice the sand underneath your feet getting harder, getting wet. You feel a wave come up, splash on your toes. It's cold. You can feel the difference between where your wetsuit begins and your bare feet. Uh, you continue into the water gets deeper, it gets awkward, you can feel sort of a current pulling at your legs, kind of making it hard to stand. The, the, the surface of the ocean floor is kind of uneven and unsteady and you're not sure with each step whether you're going to go up or down or how much. And you, you get to the point where it's deep enough now and you, you set that surfboard down or clumsily drop the surfboard into the water, it kind of makes a splash and waves are coming by and splashing up against them and you like grab the board to make sure it doesn't run away. You get further out, decide to hop up on that board, you grab it by two rails, you pull your body up, kind of scramble around hap haplessly, uh, you focus and you notice how your hips line up on the top of the surface of that board, the hard board against your hard hip bones, and you find your center of balance, you take a deep breath, and you start exerting yourself. You, you paddle, you, you move your arms deep into the water, faster, faster, paddling out the waves, and, Waves keep coming in and they're splashing up in your face and it's salty and it's hard to see and you, you wipe your face and you keep going and then you see a big wave coming on the horizon and you're not sure if you're going to make it over that wave. It's, it's pitching up, it's pitching up and you're paddling harder and harder and you're exerting yourself and you launch off the top of that wave, airborne for a little bit, well not completely airborne but the front of your board is at least and it smacks down on the other side of that wave and then you smack down on top of the board and you kind of awkwardly stumble. You, you sit up on the board, take a breath, catch your breath, look around, look back at how far out you've made it from the beach, and then continue forward. Okay, you guys can sit down now. Relax. I could, I could go on with that uh, mental exercise of reliving this surfing experience for a whole half hour, but I have some other points to make. So, hello. This is me uh, surfing a wave in Pacifica, where I live, in a wetsuit where it's cold. Um, I have a lot of ideas to talk about, and maybe I'll convey some of them okay, and you can talk to me after. Um, I, I, I don't want to sound too arrogant, like I'm like a motivational speaker here telling you how to live your life. So really, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to pretend like it for the purposes of this presentation. Again, huh? No, hot, coals. hot coals? No. <laughs> so again, this is me, Jacob Burkhart. This is uh, surfing in Mexico. And uh, important part of me is Jaybird. She's over here in the corner. She's going to help me out later. This is what she usually looks like to me in the water, catching a wave, surfing right by me. She, she, usually the wave's big enough that I'd like, just see that for a moment, and then she disappears down the face. And I'd have no idea if she made it until I see her like, way into the beach. This is the presentations on GitHub. It's uh, show off. You can download it right now and 
play along. And if you want to tweet at me, that's my Twitter. This is where I work at Engine Yard. Uh, you heard earlier today Jessica talk about the standing desk. This is the bouncing desk. Uh, we, there's actually these like half uh, balls that we should stand on and listen to music and code. OK, so what is presence? I was, I was trying to get you to perhaps experience some taste of it with my visualization. Um, so I was talking, I was at dinner last night, and I met this guy, Ezekiel. Where's Ezekiel? Wave. Ezekiel uh, told me a lot of things about uh, being a Zen Buddhist when I told him I was giving this talk. But the one thing that uh, I want to share with you is this concept of your default mental state. So the way he presented it to me, you have uh, two modes of thinking. You have your default mode in which you are thinking about the past, thinking about the future, sort of anticipating what might happen, and sort of criticizing the, the actions you've taken and critiquing yourself and like analyzing. And then the other mental state is sort of the mental state that you like have if you're being chased by a lion, where you're like completely in the moment, completely aware, and existing in the world. And it turns out you're a lot happier in that second state, but your mind defaults constantly back to the first state. Excuse me. Uh, you guys remember this talk from yesterday by Katrina. One thing she talked about that uh, really stuck out to me that I want to reiterate is this idea of working memory. And uh, my interpretation of what she was saying is that uh, if you're bogged down with lots of stuff, you have less working memory in your, in your mind to focus on whatever task. And being present is the practice of clearing your mind. And if you practice presence, you will be able to have more access to your working memory, essentially. So other aspects of presence are awareness. And that's awareness of what's around you, awareness of how your body is doing, how it's feeling how healthy you're feeling. Mindfulness, it's, it's doing things with a purpose and not entirely focusing on that purpose, but being mindful of what you're doing, sort of like, like a surgeon is probably very mindful when they're operating on somebody. Um, and it's focus. I, I think there's a lot of multitasking happening uh, with us in our lives. And uh, practicing presence is a practice of focus and can help us in our ability to focus every day. So who knows this feeling, this, this feeling of presence? How about, how about this feeling of catching a wave? It's pretty cool. This is my sister in, in Costa Rica catching a wave. How about, how about this feeling of catching a wave? <laughs> really? This is, uh, this is Jerry Lopez, a uh, famous uh, surfer. He's still around, living in Oregon. Um, here he's surfing his signature wave on Pipeline. And uh, he wrote this book that I've been reading called Surf is Where You Find It. And Jerry talks a lot about Zen and presence and surfing. And he does it in better ways than I can. So I'm just going to steal some quotes. <laughs> He's talking here about uh, surfing the pipeline, this massive wave. Although instinct isn't the right word, something like it, along with a clear mind, work better than thinking, because at the pipe, there isn't enough time for thought. A Zen-like mind that is empty of thoughts allows a strong connection with the wave. It lets the surfer be in touch with the wave as opposed to being a part of it. So this is like, I relate to this, but I don't need to surf pipeline to have this experience. <laughs> I can surf waves that are just beyond my ability um, and be completely engrossed and survival mode um, and forced into this state of presence. So I'm going to talk more about uh, surfing in general. This might be what you perceive of when you think of surfing, maybe. Nice warm beach, sand. This, this was uh, Huntington Beach last weekend. It's in Southern California. We were there uh, for the same, it was a complicated reason, I don't have time to explain, but it relates to this, uh, which is my wife and I have this company, birdswell.com, go buy a t-shirt. I'm wearing one of them right now. Cool wave. That's, that's not a model, that's just our friend. <laughs> so and at Huntington Beach, they were having this giant competition called the US Open of Surfing. Um, and Kelly Slater was there. That's one aspect of surfing. There's, uh, there's the endorsements in surfing. There's the, the magazine pictures, the selling bikinis. Um, don't really relate to that, but it's out there. Um, big wave surfing. This is like your, your compiler developers, like your, your Lawrence, who are, who are writing Ruby Motion when nobody else could. Um, 
I, I, I admire what they're doing, but um, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> then then there's, there's style. Um, this is uh, Dane Reynolds, one of the pioneers of sort of bridging the competitive aspects with the free surfing and pushing the sport forward. Um, and I really, I really admire the, this is Cassia here, her style of hanging heels is a really hard maneuver. Uh, peace is an aspect of surfing from the 70s that's still carried on a little bit. Pretty sweet surfboard. Um, I can relate to that. And, and harmony, being in harmony with nature, being out there. This is, uh, this is the beach that's closest to my house, called Rockaway Beach, and doing tree pose on the cliffs over it. Anyway, all those aspects of surfing, I started here. This is uh, Hampton, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, I don't know how many people are familiar with uh, northeastern geography. Um, New Hampshire doesn't have much, it has 13 miles of coastline, and for about half a mile is this beach where everybody comes to surf. It's called the Wall. And I'm gonna teach you a new vocabulary word here. It's called kook. That's what I was when I started. You can see me bent down, like super focused on this menial wave. Um, so we, we all start as kooks, even, even Jerry Lopez, even Kelly Slater. And even as we progress, we go back and we do something called kooking it up, where we get together with a bunch of friends, hang out in the water, catch some waves, tell some lies. Um, and it's sort of like, going back to this level of uh, just having fun. So here's some code. <laughs> um, so if, if I were giving a different presentation, the point I would make here is that you should pair. Um, but in this, in this presentation, uh, my point is that this code works. And um, when I, when I wrote this code, I, I put a bunch of put statements in, in between everything and wrote it a bunch of times and had some tests and it was really long, arduous, atrocious process uh, that I should have been present for. But because I wasn't, I was being a kook and just sort of falling back on what, it, what I knew, what I could get done, and, and I got it done. And um, I think that's okay sometimes. Just say, I'm being a kook. Just, just acknowledge it. So Jerry Lopez, not a kook, um, pretty sweet yoga guy though. Uh, he has a quote about this after surfing in some massive ways where he didn't know what to do. And he said, the answer may be so simple that it is easily overlooked. If one believes that the truth lies within, faith dictates that it will reel itself when it is most needed. It's there, so keep paddling where it leads. That, that one little line, keep paddling, is sort of a life motto I have. So getting to the next level. Uh, we were, we were kooks, we were in New Hampshire, we were surfing on the weekends, and then I met this man. Um, I started a new job in Boston. Not there now, anyway, but this is a while ago. Uh, this is Ed in his signature crouched style. It's important to have a style. Uh, and he showed us two very important things. One, he showed us there was a place to surf that was half an hour from work, and he showed us that as director of engineering with two kids and an important job, he was surfing at least once a week before work during the day. And we were like, we can do that. So we stepped up our dedication. This is a picture of winter surfing in Maine. The, the water is probably 38 degrees at most. You can see there's snow on the ground. Uh, we surfed in the winter maybe like three times that year. Um, but, but we extended our season. We went further into fall. We started more in the spring. And we started to really prioritize surfing, because on the East Coast, the best surf is right before a hurricane. Um, and if you know about hurricanes, they have a season, they're not year round. So you gotta be ready for when the swells are up, and uh, you gotta be patient when they're not. So I have some more advice for you about priorities. Um, these are the five priorities that were communicated to me by my dad, who got them from somebody else. Um, there, there, there are five priorities, they're in order. I like to think of them on my hand. Faith, health, family, friends, work. I'll go into them each four in a little bit detail. Um, but first I want to talk about Buddha, about Buddha again. So I don't, I don't know that much about Buddhism, but the, uh, the one documentary I watched, um, 
told, told this story at Buddha, uh, well, before he was the Buddha, about how he was this, this rich, spoiled brat, and he lived this life of decadence, and then he rebelled against that as a teenager, and lived this life of piety and restraint and sacrifice. And then he came to Buddhism as the middle path, the, the balance of things. And um, with these five priorities, they're in order, but it's important that you balance them. Like, you can't completely ne neglect work to go surfing, even though surfing is more important. <laughs> so here you can see this is, if you know Ruby, this is an assignment operation. I, faith, I'm assigning surf as my faith. Jerry has a quote about this. This is Jerry in Indonesia. Anytime I go surfing can be a religious experience if I let it. It is a close encounter with one of our world's greatest natural wonders. Out here on the edge of the known world, far from the distractions of civilization, I can more easily find this space. But in reality, any of us can find it anywhere because we carry it inside of us everywhere we go. So, first, our second priority, we just talked about faith. Second priority is health. You gotta take care of yourself before you take care of other people. Uh, and I'm gonna relate some things about how surfing is good for your health. So really, surfing is all five priorities, but. Um, <laughs> morning exercise. How many people have an exercise regimen before they do anything in the morning? You should all adopt one. Um, exercising in the morning gets your heart rate going, increases your metabolism, gives you benefits throughout the day. Um, my my self-explanation for this is evolution and uh, bipedalism. So standing upright and walking on two feet was one of the first traits that our ancestors evolved that distinguished us from the chimps. And um, we evolved that trait because we had to travel long distances for our food and our shelter. And um, on top of that evolved our ability to think and reason and other things that make us human. And so I feel like you have to think of those things as connected. And exercising and using your body um, comes in concert with your ability to think, and they reinforce each other. Uh, wrist strength. Who, who has uh, ever had problems with carpal tunnel or repetitive stress? So, so what I've read and, and learned and heard about this is that if your wrist hurts, the last thing you want to do is put a brace on it and not use it. The best thing to do is to exercise it. And the important thing is that you exercise it in ways that are complementary to the stress you're putting on it. And I, surfing obviously exercises the whole body, uses a lot of arm motion. You can see me flexing my wrist here as I catch a wave. Um, yeah. So family, third priority. Uh, here we are, Thanksgiving. So some people in my family. This is, this is Shiva, he lives in LA. He was one of the first people to, that I knew that surfed. And uh, I, I went surfing with him in LA when I was still in college and I was still figuring out my life. And a thing that struck me about his lifestyle was that he was, he was doing it. He was getting up every morning, going surfing, packing his suit and board in the car and driving straight to work. And um, he was just so happy with his life. Um, he didn't have a lot of other things in his life figured out, but um, that really made an impact on me. And of course, I have to give credit again to Jaybird. Um, having her with me to be there almost every time I surf in the morning and all the adventures we have in surfing um, has really reinforced the positive vibe, I guess. I don't know. Uh, friends, <laughs> almost as important as family. Um, so I was, I was in the water surfing with some of my friends and I, I told them about this talk and asked them what I should talk about with surfing. This is, uh, this is Cynthia. She's, she's really short and vegan. Um, but but the, the thing she relates most to in surfing is her addiction to surfing and how it has replaced all other uh, things that you might be addicted to, like uh, caffeine or nicotine. And she says she gets uh, jonesing if she hasn't been in the water for a while. I, I don't need caffeine, by the way. I call surfing my caffeine. Uh, this is Chris. Chris starts to talk a little funny if he hasn't surfed in a while. This is his source of sanity. Mix up words like post mango surf. <laughs> Mangoes are delicious, by the way. Uh, this is Perrin. She, she, uh, she told me how much surfing has taught her patience. Um, she's a, a relatively a beginner when it comes to surfing, 
And, uh, but she'll go out there and she'll, she'll spend hours in the water and she'll try and she'll try. And she may, she'll finally catch like one or two good waves. But it's all worth it for her and she's, she's learning and she says that that patience that she has and then the reward of finally catching a wave that carries on through the rest of her life. Finally, fifth priority, work. Is this Tom at work doing work? Um, I'm going to go back to Ed again for some advice on uh, surfing related to work. Um, I emailed for him for a bigger picture of that um, crouch style uh, wave catch and he sent me this quote. He said, it's critical to always mix work and surfing. The yellow board, which was in that last slide, uh, was picked up while I was in LA repairing COSs and meeting customers. And uh, COS is just the product that we worked on at my last job. I don't have time to explain it. Um, and he goes on to talk about all these different places that he surfed with that board and customers that he met with. And he said, it's more complicated than sending a tech or paying shipping on a new board, but that's far less satisfying. So the lesson from Ed was, have a fulfilling work life, have a fulfilling surf life, let them reinforce each other. So my surf lifestyle, it's not all infinity pools in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> on a good day, I wake up at 6 o'clock, or rather, Jaybird drags me out of bed at 6 o'clock, get in the water by 7 o'clock, this is roughly what it looks like at 7 o'clock, try to get out by 9 o'clock, it's a good two hours session, pretty solid, uh, have a quick shower, <laughs> and then get into work by 10 o'clock for the stand-up. This, this is not actually stand-up because we're drinking whiskey, but it's roughly what stand-up looks like without the whiskey. Uh, and then the massive lunch. So that morning surf, that morning exercise, really burns a lot of calories and I get really hungry. And all my coworkers know when I surf because I steal their food. Uh, Pura Vida, who's heard of this before? This is the, the Costa Rican motto, it means your life. Uh, and this is, this is how I feel about a good day. And Jerry has a quote, obviously. Such is the life we can know. Living in the past and in the future, in recollection and in anticipation, creates a less clear picture of the present. By being in the here and now, we understand that the past and the future only exist in the present. That one's pretty deep. I don't know how else to introduce that. Basically, he's saying there is no past, there is no future. There's only our memory of it and an anticipation of it. And being present is literally acknowledging that. So I want some audience participation here. Tell me your source of presence if it's not surfing. No boarding, motorcycling, yoga. Yoga? Surfing? All right, I heard you. Snowboarding? Anything else? Okay. How about travel? Um, I, I think whatever your source of presence is, you should attempt to experience it in as many places as you can. So this is, uh, this is Mount Bachelor, which is nearby, where I traveled to once. Um, Westport is a place you can travel to. Uh, I came to Seattle on Wednesday night. The conference was, didn't start till Friday. So that I could rent a car and drive down here. It's about two and a half hours from Seattle. It's the closest place to go surfing here. Um, but you, you should totally check it out. There's a surf shop there. They rent boards, they rent suits. Waves are pretty good. I was actually impressed. Uh, another place to go, a place that I go locally, is uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, I want to tell a little story about Santa Cruz. The, the problem with Santa Cruz is that the waves are so good that there's so many people there. And when you have a lot of people in a concentrated area like that, you have this problem called aggro. <laughs> so th this is one of the character types that uh, Ryan Davis didn't mention yesterday, but now you guys can use this in your vocabulary. Uh, an aggro surfer is somebody who's so frustrated with the crowds that he will take every opportunity to verbally assault anybody that he thinks has slightly slighted him or done something wrong in the water. Um, Jaybird experienced this last weekend where somebody was actually yelling at her for being too good at surfing. <laughs> it was completely contradictory, but he was very angry. Half Moon Bay, this is uh, one or two towns over from Pacifica. Um, and we were there a little while ago. This is great because Half Moon Bay is where Mavericks is. And so we'll have some screenings sometimes. And some big wave surfers will come and talk about their experiences after we watch a little film about it. 
So uh, this is Grant Twiggy Baker on one of the supposed worst wipeouts ever. Um, and he said something at one of these uh, film screenings that really stuck with me. He said, don't panic after you've panicked. Um, and I think we can relate to this as programmers uh, when things go wrong and immediately we panic and our, our lesson from surfing and our lesson in work is that you have to relax and figure out the problem and stop panicking. Um, the other guy in the room, uh, Grant Washburn, explained that all of us have built into us physically about nine or, seconds, nine or 10 seconds, we have a timer where if you go underwater and hold your breath, your body will panic at nine or 10 seconds. Everybody, even, even people that free dive and can hold their breath for five or 10 minutes, they have this in them. And what they have to do is they have to go underwater, wait for that moment to pass, regain composure, and continue. Um, I thought that was really interesting. And of course, Jerry has a quote about uh, being stuck underwater. Um, this is after he tells the story of a three-wave hold down in which he had an out-of-body experience. Moments of surf realization are here to remind us of our true potential. If that is why we surf, that's good because surfing reconnects us to who we really are. This is all the more reason to keep surfing. Life is good. Surfing reminds us how good life is. You guys do any activities that like make you think you might die? <laughs> and then get really stoked when you survive? <laughs> it's really worth it. Not intentionally. All right. That's, that's basically all I had to say. Um, we're going to have Jaybird here close it out for you. Are you ready? <laughs> I guess I have to be. I have to be present, right? That's right. Is this on? Testing. Let's go surfing. <laughs>